Striking teachers are stepping up the action. This week, over 700 schools in England, Wales and Scotland will be hit. Nearly two-thirds of a million children will be affected. In Panorama tonight, why the teachers are in revolt and where the dispute is leading. Last week, classrooms stood silent as the teachers' strike swept the country. We visited two strike-bound schools, Bilton Primary near Hull and Gosford Hill Comprehensive near Oxford. We wanted to discover why teachers feel driven to take industrial action. Right, Kathy, well, listen then, please. Obviously, tomorrow we won't be in here because I'm not going to be here on the strike. So tomorrow's lesson and third... At Gosford Hill Comprehensive, 26 of the 30 NUT members voted for strike action in support of their 12% pay claim. They've been offered 4%. The school is a social mixture of 1,100 children. Their parents may be car workers from Cowley or professionals who work in Oxford. But the strike didn't stop the dress rehearsal for the school play. It's an everyday story of space invaders, the men from the ministry and their political masters at Westminster. I have a vital speech to make in the Commons tonight. You're going to make public the alien threat. More urgent than that, the school teachers are binding on about how they're overworked and underpaid again. Got to put them in their place before the next election. There won't be any bally election. The play was not without its topicality. It only went ahead because the NUT gave the drama teacher, Nigel Timms, special dispensation. It's probably just Reagan playing Star Wars again. How are you going to react to it? In different ways. He's one of the 26 teachers who voted for strike action. Gosford Hill was not completely closed down during the strike. Only half the staff are members of the NUT. Members of the other less militant unions kept on teaching. George Metcalf is head of modern languages and rep for the Assistant Masters and Mistresses Association. Its members are equally disillusioned but again strike action. Some of these children start their exams this week. They've already missed several lessons because of the strike. Last year, 36 pupils went on to do degrees. But George Metcalf is worried that unless paying conditions improve, good graduates will shun teaching and academic standards will suffer. Well, I've been teaching for over 30 years and I can never remember morale being as low as it is now. At a time when uh, I think the demands that are being put upon a teacher are so much greater than they were before, it's no longer a case of simply concentrating upon one's classroom teaching. Uh, we're having to think about, th think about things like curriculum development, uh, new examinations, those of us who are form teachers have got great demands in the way of pastoral work as well. At a time like this, the stress is really tremendous, I think, on a teacher. And uh, it's a tiring job. And I think we'd like to feel that, OK, we'll do it as long as we are being appreciated, as long as we are getting paid a rate for the job. If you had your time over again, would you stay in the te teaching profession? I don't think I would take up teaching in the first place, quite frankly. I don't think I would recommend it to any of my students either. Unless they were really dedicated, then I would say it's, it's not a job to take up now. Lean out back. That's nice. There are those who say that teachers have an easy life, that they work from nine till four, spend three months a year on holiday and have no worries about job security. These teachers from Gosford Hill took a party of boys and girls to South Wales last week on an outward bound course. They too had been given special dispensation by their union. That's the same as normal. It may look like a holiday for them too, but they're looking after 30 teenagers 24 hours a day for 10 days. At the moment, all these extra activities are voluntary, as our duties done in the lunch hour and after school. The employers want to make some of them compulsory under new contracts of service, but most teachers are against it. Teachers know that the Education Secretary, Sir Keith Joseph, has revolution in mind. He wants to link higher pay with performance and see teachers assessed and promoted accordingly. 
but revolution is difficult when the troops are demoralized. This police ad stuck on the staff room wall makes the point. A police recruit at 18 and a half gets eight and a half thousand pounds a year. A teacher two years older starts at nearly three thousand pounds less. This crisis of pay and morale is having the most serious repercussions at Gosford Hill. It is now losing its young specialist teachers. Maths teacher Vivian Long is leaving at Easter. She's going to devise training programs for WH Smith. Another mathematician left at Christmas. A modern linguist and a physicist said goodbye last summer. There is no future for me in it. Um, I look around and see lack of money to provide things. I can't be a, an innovative teacher anymore. You try hard to be innovative, you try hard to make things different and interesting for the children, but it doesn't always work. There's no money to help you do that. Um, so you do try, but again, it's like hitting your head against a brick wall. I've been promoted once already to a scale two, and the chances of me getting a scale three are quite low. So to the future, I'd just be carrying on the way I'm going at the moment, which isn't exactly what I want. So I shall leave. <laughs> but teaching needs people like you, doesn't it? I'm sure it does need people like me. Um, but I, I've given it all. I've given it my best. I've given it six and two thirds years nearly. And it's what I always wanted to do ever since I've been a child. But I've had enough. So that's the end of that. I shall try something new. It's the enticing world of commerce and industry that offers these young specialist teachers the pay and prospects which teaching does not. Conoco Oil now employs one young teacher from Gosford Hill. Nikki Marples left last Christmas. She's a Cambridge graduate with a degree in maths and economics. Nikki taught at the school for three years and was on a salary of £8,000 when she left. She saw her next promotion seven or eight years away. As a trainee at Conoco, she earns more than she did as a teacher. I think the only way that, that things are going to change is if people leave, vote with their feet, leave the teaching profession completely, um, and then the government and the local authority will be left with, well, with what's left. Unfortunately, it's only the, the young staff who are flexible enough, perhaps, to leave. Uh, I know of several other people who are leaving from the school, some that are actually leaving, some who would if other opportunities came up. Nice and deep then, breathe nice and deep. That's it, good. Barry Grinham, who teaches PE and biology at Gosford Hill, is also leaving. He's going to set up his own health club. He already devotes many extra hours a week to running keep fit classes for his pupils and their parents, for nothing. Now he's going to do it full time as a business. Before you start lifting the bar, make sure it's tight. Tired of telling his mates at the rugby club that he does not have short days and long holidays, he's calculated the effect of all the extra hours he works in a year. You end up with like one and a half weeks of paid holiday. And so when I tell them that, um, they're quite taken aback, you know, they're, they're shocked. And then they go, oh yeah, but you get overtime. And they just don't believe that there's no such thing as overtime. And that's without the lesson preparation, without writing reports, without file filling, without attending parents' evenings, without going to committee meetings, without going to sports governing body meetings. All of those are aside, besides the 10 hours, basically, what we do after school. So what happens, then, in the long term, if teachers like you leave, what happens to the profession? Well, it just goes downhill rapidly. Uh, um, as more and more leave, the enthusiastic, the flexible, um, the young, you're left with the less good, the more who are set in their ways. Um, it's just going to get worse. And what happens to education? Well, inevitably, the standard of education will fall, is falling. And unless something is done soon, um, it's going to be disastrous. Can you hear me at the back? Right. Um, back in Oxfordshire last week, the anger became apparent when striking teachers met to discuss their pay claim. Gosford Hill was well represented. What we've been doing and why we're in the position we are now. Um, starting Although the NUT is opposed in principle to trading off conditions of service for more pay, the disappearance of that additional 7% they thought was on offer has only made matters worse. It was a lie. There was no more money available. They knew there was no more money available. And yet they persisted in going on and saying, if we accept new conditions of service, worsen conditions of service, there would be money available. 
teachers here also voted to keep pay and conditions as two separate issues. But doubts about the effectiveness of the strike remain, despite the display of solidarity. I don't know if it will get us anywhere, but we need to try and make somebody listen to us and listen to why we feel like we do at the moment. And it's not just pay, it's everything else as well. And I just hope somebody will listen. But the government are not likely to listen to a profession no. that takes strike action, is it? No, I realise that, but perhaps Oxfordshire and the teachers and the parents of children in Oxfordshire will realise why we're doing the things that we're doing in Oxfordshire alone. Perhaps then the government will in turn look, or our MPs will help us. I don't honestly know. But Vivian Long won't be driving to Gosford Hill every morning for much longer. To her, the strike is now academic since she's leaving at Easter. Her departure is a vote of no confidence in the profession, despite Sir Keith Joseph's plans for its future. Late last Monday night, Gosford Hill's music teacher was still rehearsing the joint school choir as part of the long-term preparation for the Strasbourg Music Festival this summer. By that time, he will have seen two more colleagues leave the school. Oh. Are you betraying the children? I suppose I am, yes, yes. I'm definitely letting down a lot of the children that I'm teaching at the moment because I'm leaving halfway through a year. And that I don't like doing, but the opportunity might not arise again, so I unfortunately have to put myself first for a change. Action. The market forces are at work, and the exodus of young specialist teachers may do more long-term damage to our children than the current strike action. And that's all for Panorama, I'm afraid, from tonight. Uh, for tonight, we'll be back next week at the same time at 9.25. Until then, from us all here, good night. <laughs>